I'm starting out my meal prep day here with doing some pans of lasagna. Now these eight by eight foil pans are a large enough size for Alan and I to get two dinners out of them. So we'll eat, you know, about half of a pan for one night of dinner and the other half the next. Um, so this is just the right size for us. I always have these foil pans on hand because these are what I sell my sourdough dinner rolls in for the farmer's market. But of course you don't have to have foil pans in order to meal prep. You can prep the, your lasagna into whatever dish you want to cook it in. That's totally fine too. And it will freeze in the freezer. So, but these uh, foil pans, I just kind of reuse when we eat a pan of rolls, then I'll just save them for meal prep things like this in the future. So I just made up on this morning a nice big batch of sauce to create the lasagna with. And for my sauce, I like to use Italian sausage. And then I actually am using two jars of home canned spaghetti meat sauce that I mixed in with that Italian sausage. So I just made myself a meat sauce to go in the lasagna here. For my lasagna also, I like to do cottage cheese instead of ricotta cheese. So I just mixed up the cottage cheese along with some Parmesan cheese. I typically use the package instructions as they are written on the Barilla uh, noodle box. So you see I'm using those no bake, no not no bake, no boil noodles there, but and I like to follow their recipe as far as the proportions of everything because it results in a nice um, firm lasagna, one that's not too runny. So I really prefer that. The only kind of changes that I make well, I make a few changes, I guess, but I like to, I do follow the proportions. So I change, instead of using ricotta cheese, I use cottage cheese. And instead of using shredded mozzarella, I like to use those slices that you see me use in there. And I also put a couple of eggs into my uh, cottage cheese mixture because I think that also adds to a more firm lasagna in the end. So there's a couple of changes that I make, but you know, you really can make your lasagna any way that you like to prepare it and then make it up a double batch or triple batch and freeze it. It just freezes so well and it reheats well later on. So of course, once it comes time to freeze this, you will not bake it in advance. You can just put it straight into the fridge and freezer, unbaked. And on this day in particular, what I'm gonna do is serve one of these lasagnas for our dinner on this night that I'm making them. And then the other two I will wrap up and put in the refrigerator. I like to get them nice and chilled before I move them into the freezer for more permanent storage. If you don't uh, refrigerate your freezer things before you put them in the refrigerator, they can sometimes get frosty because they still will have a little bit of steam coming out from the warmth of the dish. So it's better if you can take Take the time, um, if you've got it, to just refrigerate them first, and then the next day is usually when I'll put that other put the stuff into the freezer. For storage, the one that we're going to have for our dinner tonight, I go ahead and put some foil over top of it. You saw I sprayed that foil before I put it on there. That way that cheese doesn't totally stick to the top. You still might have a little bit of sticking, but not as bad, I assure you. <laughs> and then the rest, the other two, I will double wrap in some plastic wrap. And then those, I will also put a piece of foil over. That way I'll have the foil on there when it comes time to bake them. I'm going to double wrap them with the plastic first, put a piece of foil over top, give them a nice label on there so that I know exactly what's in there. When it comes time to bake these, I'll just remove that plastic wrap and bake them in the oven. And you can bake these either from frozen or from thawed. So if you want to thaw them, you'll pull them out a couple of days in advance and put that in the refrigerator. If you bake it from frozen, you'll just unwrap it, take the plastic off, put the foil back over the top and then bake it from frozen. So of course you will have to adjust your cook time accordingly, but um, either way is totally fine and they bake up nicely both ways.
next up I have a few different cuts of pork that I'm going to be working with. So the big piece of pork that you see there is a pork butt roast and that is a boneless pork butt roast. So I removed sort of the wrapper thing that they put on there that holds it all together. Basically it's a pork shoulder that they have removed the shoulder blade from the inside. So it's a little bit easier to work with. You can do the same exact thing that I'm going to be doing here today though with a shoulder, a bone in roast would be just fine as well. Um, but I just think if they have removed the bone that's a little bit easier on me to begin with. So I'm going to be using that shoulder roast for pork carnitas and then I have two packs there of country style ribs and I'm going to be using those for just country ribs. I will serve that as a slow cooker meal over rice and have some vegetables on the side or something like that. So today for the country style ribs I am going to go ahead and mix up this onion and mushroom soup mix as the sort of flavoring for those country style ribs. These always come out so, so good in the crock pot or slow cooker. I always use my instant pot as my slow cooker and just cook it that way. So on the day that I finally did prepare these country style ribs, I actually cooked them in the instant pot, but on the slow cook setting on high for about four hours on high and they turned out perfectly. I actually cooked them from frozen. I didn't thaw them at all. I hadn't remembered to take anything out for dinner that night. And again, this is exactly why I do things like this in order to save me on those nights. So I did remember midday that I needed to put something in for dinner. So I pulled these out from frozen. I just chucked the frozen block of country style ribs and that marinade over into the slow cooker and turned it on high for four hours. And they really came out so, so nice. The next meal that I'm gonna be working on here is a pork carnitas. So I'm using that boneless shoulder roast and I'm gonna cut it down into some cubes in order to make two different meals, at least two different meals out of this pork shoulder roast. So first of all, I'm gonna remove some of that fat cap from there because since it's gonna be a slow cooker or a pressure cooking recipe, you really just don't need all that additional fat in there. If you were cooking this, like smoking it or long cooking it in the oven or something, that's when you would want that additional fat, but this is not something that we need for our indoor type of cooking. And you see here, I just kind of bust out my bread knife because my other knife was so dull, it was really frustrating me. So I'm gonna cut this into some cubes, as I said. And you see the marinade that I have there is called Brazilian Steakhouse. That is probably my favorite little package of marinade that I have found so far. So let me tell you the way that I will prepare this. I will just pour this straight over into my Instant Pot or Crock Pot. I don't actually have a Crock Pot. I just use my Instant Pot as a slow cooker for things that I wanna slow cook. So there is a slow cooker setting on the Instant Pot, so I just use it. Typically, I slow cook on low. Um, it just depends on the day, you know, how much time I have. So this is something that I will use for either tacos or burrito bowls some sort of dish like that. So I'll just put it over into the slow cooker on a day when I have some time to just let it cook most of the day and it will get super, super fall apart tender. You can of course add in additional things. If you liked onions in with your meat, you could add onions or peppers, things like that would be delicious with this. So on, those on the day that you go to cook it, you can either chop up some additional vegetables and throw them in to slow cook as well or add them later on in the day. So that's totally up to you. But here, I'm just gonna put about half a cup of water per bag along with that seasoning package per bag. And that'll be plenty of water in here because this meat has so much fat, it will give off a lot of liquid in the slow cooker. When I go to serve this, I usually will shred it up at the end of the cooking time. And then I like to crisp it up even further in a pan. So I put it into a cast iron skillet with a little bit of fat and I sear it up before we use it for tacos or to top our burrito bowls.
Next up, I have one more cut of pork that I'm gonna be working with, and this is pork tenderloins. So I like to buy the package of pork tenderloins. It typically has two pork tenderloins inside each package. So I bought two packages on this day, and I'm gonna be cutting them all down into pork medallions, as I call them. I am not sure if that is a technical term, but that's what I call it when I cut the pork tenderloin down into about one and a half or two inch pieces. That way, it just makes it so much easier to season it up and cook it up later on down the road. And then I can sort of divide it up into different meals as well. I just really prefer cooking these smaller medallions than the whole pork tenderloin. I feel like you can get more flavor to them because you have a lot more surface area once you cut it up. Also, it cooks so much more quickly and it's a lot easier to cook in different methods. So the things, the ways that I usually cook these pork medallions are either in the skillet inside, like on the uh, stove top. I just sear them up and cook them in there because they only take a few minutes per side to cook. And um, I also like to do them on the grill. And then this year in particular, this is our first year, um, spring and summer basically, that we will have the Blackstone Grill. So I am trying to do some things that I can cook on the Blackstone Grill as well. So for the first marinade that I'm gonna be putting these pork medallions in, well, let me explain first. I have five bags there and I end up consolidating this pork into four different bags instead of five because I didn't think that dividing it among five bags would be enough meat per meal for us. So I ended up just changing my mind and going down to four meals for this pork uh, tenderloin anyway. Just wanted to let you know that. But here I am using a ginger soy, I think it was called sesame ginger marinade or something. Um, so it took some soy sauce, some honey, some oil and water, I believe. So that is what I'm gonna use for one of these. And this was delicious. If I can find a link to this seasoning packet, I will definitely link it because it was for, in particular, for like um, stir fry bowls, I believe they called it. But um, it, it turned out so great. I ended up cutting those little pork medallions down and doing them on the Blackstone Grill alongside some fried rice. And then I cooked some snap peas along with that as well. And that was just one of the best meals that So I realized while I was doing this and working with all that pork that I really needed to get the chicken cut down and into the baggies as well before I started mixing up my marinades to go over everything. So I didn't want to forget about the chicken that I had in the refrigerator too. So I'm doing today um, chicken wings to begin with and I'm also going to do some chicken breasts. So what you're seeing me do with these wings here is just cutting off the wing tips. Now you can cut these further down into drummy, drumettes and flats if you want to. But today, I, I don't mind if they're whole like this, but I don't like to cook the wing tips because I can always throw those into a broth or something and get more use out of them, basically. If I cook them along with the regular chicken wing, then they just kind of go to waste. So I'm throwing the little wing tip into another bag and I will put that bag into the freezer for the next time that I make broth. So I wanted to go ahead and divide the big package of wings that I purchased down into two different bags and cut that wing tip off and that way we get two different meals out of the package of wings. And I won't be seasoning up the wings on the day that I put them into the bags here. I just wait until I put them in the oven to season. So I will put some salt and pepper on them and then once they're cooked and up and are really, really crispy after they have baked for quite a while, then I will sauce them. I, so we like to do a buffalo sauce and a Parmesan, garlic Parmesan sauce, I believe I do also. So that's just usually how I prepare the wings. And honestly with them, I just do the wings by themselves and I cut up some celery and some carrots and that is usually dinner for that night. So the wings are basically done. I'm just gonna put a label on them in just a moment and then we'll move on to the chicken breast.
for my chicken breast, you guys know I always do this whenever I'm doing meal preps. I always cut the chicken breast down into thinner fillets. Basically just take the chicken breast and cut it in half lengthwise along the entire length of the piece of chicken breast. So you just need a good sharp knife. Go ahead and cut that down because that just stretches your meal prep so much. If you cook the big pieces of chicken, a lot of times I find that they're so tough by the time you get done cooking those big thick pieces of chicken as well. When you cut them down into these fillets like this, you can cook them for so much less time and also they get more seasoning because they have more surface area to be seasoned on. So I just think this is the best way to prepare chicken breast. And at this point, I always cut them down into a lot smaller pieces like this because I just think it tastes better and it's so much easier to prepare when they're cut down into chicken cutlets rather than the big thick chicken breast. Okay, so once I have the chicken divided, I'm gonna leave one bag of the chicken breast plain with no seasoning, just in case I have any recipes that come up throughout the month that I wanna make that I just need plain old, regular old chicken breast for. So uh, that one can just directly go into the fridge, fridge or freezer. The other ones I'm gonna label up and I'm gonna marinate along with the other meats. So you see me on this day, I'm using that pink or another color of paper tape. I really like to put the tape on the bags because I find it so much easier to see and read. Once you have some product in those bags and you are trying to read exactly what you wrote on that little label, it becomes a little bit difficult sometimes. <laughs> so I also like to put the date on there, not because I think the food is gonna go bad necessarily, but I just like to see how long um, since I've meal prepped an item that it's been in my freezer so that I know like, okay, we really have not gotten to that one. So we really didn't like that or whatever. So it just gives me a reference point of how long it's been in there. So there was my plain chicken. This is the chicken wings. Those are also going to be plain until it's time to cook them later on, on another day. And then I will coat them up with some seasoning at that point. Next up, I'm gonna be making up some marinades, and on this day in particular, I did not get super creative with my marinades. I did ones that I have done before, and you'll find the link to those in the description box below. One of them is a honey mustard marinade, and the other one is called my like best ever marinade, I believe I call it. I, they're just tried and true marinades, ones that I know we like, we enjoy the flavors of, so I, they're kind of my go-tos for sure. They also taste good with both chicken and pork, and that's kind of what I was trying to accomplish today, was being able to kind of kill two birds with one stone when it comes to making up these marinades. So I wanted to share a little bit more with you about why I think this is the easiest way to meal prep dinners. This is what makes it easy for me. If I have the meat or the main dish kind of taken care of, I find it very easy much easier to focus on side dishes because I think if you keep a well-stocked pantry then you can easily pull together a couple of side dishes for any dinner you know if you keep rice if you keep pasta potatoes so those type of things I almost always have on hand will really always always have on hand sweet potatoes baking potatoes roasting potatoes onions you know pantry staples like that that way you can quickly throw together some sort of side dishes to go along with your meal also weekly I am going to the grocery store so that doesn't mean that I'm doing a big grocery um, haul each week typically I'm not buying meat every single week I am just buying sort of supplemental things each week so vegetables fresh items snack type things that we like to keep around those are the kind of things that I'm buying weekly that I can easily fill in for side dishes when I do meal preps like this. 
I also love to have a couple of bags of salad on hand. So I don't usually keep a ton of salad ingredients like lettuce by itself and other salad things, but I do like to have the chopped and bagged salads. That way I can really easily make up a meal with this meat that I already had thought of in advance and then side dishes to go along with it. I think you'll notice that I take a semi-homemade approach to meal prep here. So I don't mind using some marinades and seasoning mixes and some uh, packaged items here and there, but I do like to cook at home and have our meals on the table prepared fresh for us every single night. So using some convenience items is what helps me to accomplish that. So I think that um, a little bit of balance is okay and do what you can in order to provide meals for your family in the best way that you can. I would love to know who some of your cooking inspiration was that got you started with cooking. And I would say for me personally, I, as a young wife, young mother type of person, I remember watching a few people on the Food Network. First of all, Rachel Ray, for sure. And her, she at that time, she had 30 minute meals on. And that was like basic cooking of 30 minute meals. I learned so much from that. And she was on every single day. And my little guy was so little at that point. So we would watch that every single day and get meal inspiration from there of just how to put different ingredients together in a way to pull a dinner together every night. So the other person that I liked and she is known for her semi-homemade approach is Sandra Lee. I don't know if you ever watched her on the Food Network as well, but I really liked her too because she did, she would use a cake mix, but jazz it up, but she would use a seasoning packet, but uh, you know, do something to it to change it up that type of thing and I really was inspired by her as well so y'all will have to tell me in the comments who some of your cooking favorites were now early on when I would watch with my dad we would watch people like Julia Childs and Jacques Pepin and Yan Can Cook so if you ever saw any of them that was more like PBS I think at that point but he really loved to watch them especially Yan Can Cook so uh, <laughs> those were some of our favorites back in the day, way back in the day, I guess that was. Okay, now we're just gonna go through and divide up this marinade. Oh, it looks like I already did here. So just finishing up these bags and I will get them labeled up and put away here soon. I've got two different chicken. I've got one of the chicken in the best ever marinade and one of the chicken with the honey mustard marinade and the same exact thing for the pork medallions. One in honey mustard, one in the best ever marinade and that is gonna be so nice. We've already eaten one of the honey mustard chickens, actually just last night, I did a honey mustard chicken baked in the oven. I just poured the frozen chicken breast, well partially frozen chicken breast, along with the marinade into a baking dish. Cooked it up just like that, covered with foil, made up some rice, and I used the liquid and the marinade and everything that cooked up with the chicken to top the rice. Did some steamed veggies along with it, and it was delicious. This was such a successful day of meal prepping, a few things to put in the freezer. I ended up with about 20 meals out of this day and it took me about maybe two hours to accomplish this. That was with cleaning up and everything. So I feel like this was really, really successful. I also forgot to show you, and I'll show you here in just a moment, that I did the night before, I had done the pork chops that I like to do. So it's thin cut pork chops and I just coat them in shake and bake or whatever breadcrumb mixture that you like and put them out flat on a sheet tray 
freeze them out flat on a sheet tray in your freezer and then the next morning this morning that I'm doing this I just threw them into a baggie and labeled them up as well so those are super easy to take out what you need cook up only what you need of those little pork chops put them in the air fryer we love them in the air fryer because they get extremely crispy that way so those are another great, great meal prep option as well. So now all of my chicken stuff and my pork stuff is going first into the refrigerator. And then later on, once I make a path in my freezer, I will go ahead and clear that out and freeze this stuff up too. So there's the pork chops that I was trying to tell you about. Well, I really appreciate you being here today and spending some time with me as I do meal prep the easy way, in my opinion. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed it as well. You'll have to let me know if you try out any of these things and stocking up your freezer with them. Also, let me know what things you think make meal prep easy. So anyway, I enjoyed you being here today. I hope you enjoyed it too, and I can't wait to see you back here again real soon.